the linkage of financial statements. The four financial statements are linked with each other and linked across time. This linkage is also known as articulation. The statement of financial position and statement of comprehensive income are linked via the retained earnings. Retained earnings are updated each period and reflect cumulative income that has not yet been distributed to shareholders. This figure shows XYZ Incorporated retained earnings reconciliation for 2020. Now, in the absence of transactions with stockholders, like stock issuances, repurchases, and dividend payments, the change in stockholders' equity equals income or loss for the period. Example, the retained earnings for XYZ Incorporated on September 30, 2019 was 5.607 million pesos. Okay. On that year, there is an income of 3.496 million. So, there's no dividend payments, okay? no stock issuances no repurchases, and there's only a minimal adjustment of 0 0.002 million. That means that the change in stockholders' equity equals the income or loss. So this is just the change in the stockholders' equity. So the income statement thus measures the change in company value as measured in accordance with financial reporting standards. This is not necessarily company value as measured by the market. Of course, all value relevant items eventually find their way into the income statement. So from a long-term perspective, the income statement does measure change in company value. This is why stock prices react to reported income and to analyst expectations about future income. I guess this is very obvious as we can see in this figure that the retained earnings of XYZ Incorporated has increased because of its net income. So that means if the company has a net loss, example, this 3.496 is not income but a net loss, the retained earnings of XYZ Incorporated will decrease okay, because of the net loss. But since it is an income, a net income, it increased to 9.101 million pesos. Okay. Now, XYZ Incorporated begins the fiscal year 2019 to 2020 with assets of 17.205 million pesos, consisting of cash amounting to 6.392 million pesos and non-cash assets of 10.813 million pesos. Okay, these investments, the cash and non-cash assets, okay, you call these investments, these investments are financed by 7.221 million pesos from non-owners. Okay, non-owners because it's from liabilities. And 9.984 million pesos from the shareholders. Okay, so the owner financing or the owner's equity consists of contributed capital, which is 4.355 million pesos. The retained earnings of 5.607 million pesos 
and other stockholders' equity of 0.022 million pesos. So that's a total of 9.984 million pesos. So 7.221 million pesos from non owners or liabilities plus the owner's equity of 9.984 million pesos. That is a total of 17.205 million pesos and also the assets of the company, which is 17.205 million pesos. Okay, now, this figure shows statement of financial position at the beginning and end of XYZ Incorporated. Okay. So the statement of cash flows explains how operating, investing, and financing activities increase the cash balance by 2.960 million pesos from 6.392 million pesos. Okay. So take a look at from the statement of financial position. On 2019, the cash balance of the company was 6.392 million pesos. Now, by year 2020, the cash balance is 9.352 million pesos. So this is explained in the statement of cash flows. From operating cash flows, a positive cash balance of 5.470 million pesos. Investing cash flows, that's a negative cash balance of 3.249 million pesos. And financing cash flows, positive of 0.739 million pesos. So with a net change in cash of 2.960 million pesos. Thus, the cash balance of XYZ Incorporated on September 30, 2019 is 6.392 million pesos. Okay. You add the net change in cash on 2020, so that is 2.960. So the cash balance on September 30, 2020 is now 9.352 million pesos. So XYZ Incorporated. Net earnings that 3.496 million pesos reported on the income statement is also carried over to the statement of shareholders equity. So this is the statement of comprehensive income. Okay, with a total revenue of 24.006 million pesos, less the expenses of 20.510 million pesos. So there's a net earnings of 3.496 million pesos. So this is carried over to the statement of stockholders in the case of here 3.496 million pesos. Right. So the net income explains nearly all of the change in retained earnings reported in the statement of shareholders' equity because XYZ Incorporated paid no dividends. So as you can see here, dividends zero. Okay, in that year, other adjustment reduced retained earnings by 0 0.002. Okay, so there is an adjustment of 0 0.002 so the retained earnings on september 30 2019 which is 5.607 million pesos you add the net income for the year which is 3.496 million pesos you deduct other adjustments which is 9 point a uh, 0 0.002 million pesos so the retained earnings on September 30, 2020 is now 9.101 million pesos. So there is an order to financial statement preparation. Now, how do we prepare financial statements? Okay.
first, a company prepares its income statement using the statement of comprehensive income accounts. So you make the financial statement first. Now, what are the comprehensive income accounts? So those are the uh, revenues and expenses. It then uses the net income number and dividend information to update the retained earnings account. Because uh, as I have said, the retained earnings is affected by the net income. So the retained earnings will increase if there is a net income. The retained earnings will decrease if there is a net loss. Second, it prepares the statement of financial position using the updated retained earnings account along with the remaining statement of financial position accounts from the trial balance. Okay, because in the finance statement of financial position, you will uh, update the stockholder equity. So the retained earnings, because if there is an income or a net loss, the retained earnings will be affected. That's why the statement of financial position will also be affected. Third, it prepares the statement of stockholders' equity. And fourth, it prepares the statement of cash flows using information from the cash accounts and other sources. So that is the order to financial statement preparation. Okay? Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something from today's video presentation.